Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to explore a little bit more on the Oppo Find N3. Bear in mind, this is the foldable, not the flip phone. I do have the flip, which I will talk about it in another video. But let's talk a bit more about this device. What's new, what are the new features, and how you can expect to actually get the most out of this particular phone. Let's begin the video right away. Now, first and foremost, um, being a flagship from Oppo, you can expect the Find N3 here to come with all kinds of premium specifications, and that means it is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. My device here comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is a ton, and you can even expand it by an additional 12 GB if that matters to you. Um, if you look at the back here, you notice that we do have the Hasselblad logo. So obviously, again, this is super premium stuff, and this is one of their most high-end flagships, I would say, that has been released to date. Right now, just taking a look at the design itself, we have here a very unique design. Right now, you know, Oppo is going for this circular kind of uh, camera cutout at the back. I think the entire look in this goldish kind of colorway looks very, very, uh, how should I say it? Looks luxurious, guys. Like, if you take a look at the LED flash at the top end corner here, it looks sort of like it is designed to blend in with the entire back panel, and I really, really like it. A lot. One thing to note here is that the camera bump at the back is quite significant and that's because you do have a telephoto zoom on the inside. I'll talk more about that in the camera section but just in terms of the design, excellent excellent feel. It is super flat guys, like check this out, there is no gaps in between whenever you close the phone so just in case some of you are worried about you know those kind of dust going into the gaps, there are no gaps, very very tight. Other than that, a very very nice touch here is that we do have here a slider button guys and this is the alert slider that allows you to put it into do not disturb silent and I really like it here because I'm all about those physical switches so great to see that here on the Oppo Find N3 now just in case you're wondering as well the lock button here also doubles up as a fingerprint scanner so there is no in display fingerprint scanner you have a physical one and it's super quick you do have a couple of speakers all around and if you just take a closer look at the design you'll notice that it's a bit angular over here and on the sides, it's a bit curved. So I think if you are a right-hand user, the curve will actually hit into your palm, which is actually quite comfortable. But if you're mostly using your left hand, the sort of like edge here does dig into your palm a little bit. I think I have grown used to it because I use both my hands to use the phone, but just thought I should point that out in case you want to know about that. So just overall, in terms of the design and the build, I would say this is definitely top-notch, super flagship and premium feel all around. Alright, so let's talk a bit more about using this phone as a foldable. I think there are a couple of things that you might want to know here. First and foremost, we have that external display. Uh, I think we should call it the cover display. So this is how it looks like. If you notice, the aspect ratio is very similar to that of a normal standard phone. And I really appreciate that because some foldables, I'm sure you guys know which one, they are actually very narrow and it feels like you are using a remote. Now having such a narrow display on those foldables here, you know, doesn't encourage you to use the external display and you will want to use the internal display most of the time. However, with the fine entry here, we have this very nice, like I said, wide display at the front that is actually very easy to use and I realized because it's such a nice aspect ratio, I've actually been using it most of the time. Like whenever I'm just out and about, I want to check my messages, just like how I would usually use my other phones. I'm actually using the cover screen here more than I thought I would be. Anyways, for the larger screen on the inside, I find that usually when I'm watching videos or say for example, I want to get into my games, this is where I mainly use the larger screen on the inside to do all that. Of course, if you are into your productivity stuff as well, it works very, very well on the inside. Say for example, I've got a couple of apps here from my Microsoft Office. I have my documents, my Word and all that. So it's actually very easy to just get into the split screen mode. You just drag down from the top with two fingers and you can split the screen side by side. If you want to add on a third window at the bottom, you can also do that. So the inside screen is actually mainly used for productivity needs when you want to watch videos on a larger screen or if you want to play games on a larger screen. I would say that the inside screen is mainly for maximum entertainment as well as maximum productivity. But most of the times you will be using the external cover display because this is where you will be able to have all your quick actions. Now one thing to note about the screen on the inside, I know a lot of people are actually very concerned about that crease down the middle. Now one thing I noticed about Oppo's affordables is that the crease that they have even on their previous affordable is actually very minimal. Like you barely even see it unless you intentionally look for the crease all the time. And I must say that after a month of using this phone, 
I practically don't notice a crease at all. Now I'll give you a very quick tip here. If you want to have the minimal visibility of that crease itself, you should definitely check out like uh, a lighter shade of wallpaper. Obviously, if you're gonna use a dark wallpaper, there will be some kind of reflections, but this kind of light shade wallpapers really hides the crease very, very well and it's almost as good as invisible. So I would say that, you know, great job from Oppo here in creating such a almost invisible crease. The folding mechanism is also very solid. It doesn't feel like it's very flimsy or it's going to fall off or it's going to break. It's very, very solid and sturdy, guys. One more thing that you should also note here is that because uh, we have two screens, some of you might be worried about the battery life. I noticed that it actually held up really well. You could definitely get about five to six hours of screen on time depending on your usage. So like I said, if you are like me and you are using mostly the external or the cover display, you will be able to get a longer battery life. But if you are having like a holiday, you're spending most of your time at home and you are mostly on the inside screen, this is obviously where your battery life will drop off a little bit. But obviously that is very expected. Nothing out of the ordinary, guys. All right, I think I should talk a bit about the cameras at the back. Uh, how do they actually perform? Now, I won't go into the megapixel count and all that. But before that, again, I should mention that this is actually powered or color tuned by Hasselblad. Now, if you just take a look at the phone industry right now, we have uh, the Leica tuned images. We have the Zeiss ones from you know who. And of course, we have Hasselblad that is on Oppo. Now, how is Hasselblad different from the others? Well, basically for Leica, they do have like sort of a vignette around the image. The contrast is a bit higher. Whereas for the Zeiss and Hasselblad kind of uh, image color tuning, it's more natural. It's a bit flatter, but it's very, very true to life. So let me show you a couple of photo samples here taken from the fine entry. Again, none of these pictures are edited. They're straight off the camera. So check that out. I actually noticed that there were a lot of detail, obviously. Again, this is a flagship camera. Pictures look very, very true to life. I'm actually very, very amazed by the amount of detail, the dynamic range that was actually being able to be shown on the fine entry. And of course, we do have that telephoto lens as well that do helps out a little bit when you just want to zoom in closer to the subject. Again, a lot of detail even though it was taken by the telephoto lens. But yeah, let me know what you think about these photos down in the comment section below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Anyways, I think that should pretty much wrap up my quick sort of like review of the Oppo Find N3. Again, I think this is a very mature affordable coming from Oppo. Of course, I would like to have the entire design maybe all curved maybe in the future version, but I believe that's also partly due to the hinge that's at the back. But yeah, very, very nice affordable from the Oppo Find N3. Amazing build quality great cameras, great displays on the outside and inside as well. Fantastic by the way. And of course, if you are in the market looking for a affordable, I think the Oppo Find Entry here should definitely be on your list of items to consider. Anyways, if you have any further questions guys, feel free to leave a comment down below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see even the Find Entry flip. Uh, thank you for watching. Looking forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Stay safe and take care. Bye-bye.